the Hebrew word for breath of God is ruach. It's ruach. See, I'm just like you, like a ship without a sail. But once I connect to the wind of God, once I connect to the breath of God, see, the word of God is just like wind. It's just like wind. And when we speak the word, it's just like a mighty wind of heaven that are blowing every situation we run into. Y'all ain't helping me. Ah, he might have been able to defeat me, but he can't do anything with the wind of God, the wind of God, the wind of God, the breath of God. Let the breath of God blow in every situation, in every trouble, in every trial. Let the wind blow. Somebody shout glory! So what is it? What is it? What is it? Is it an ailment in your body? What, what, what is it? What is it? Is it a financial situation? What? What is it? What is it? Is it a situation regarding your career? What is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? What is, it? is it trouble in your family? What is it? What is it? What is it? Is it disturbance in your mind? What is it? What is it? What is it? What? What is it? What's troubling you? What's, mm -hmm, what's trying to distract you? What is it? What is it? Well, I have a word for you from the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm, and God told me to tell somebody up in here, let the wind blow. Let the wind blow. Let the ruach, the ruach, the ruach. It's the ruach of God. It's the, it's the, it's the breath of let the breath. Let the breath, let the breath of, let the breath of God. Let the breath of God. The moment you put out the word of God, you put out the wind of God, you put out the breath of God. Let him breathe, 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 let him breathe. Somebody shout hallelujah in here. Mm, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Come on and give him praise in the sanctuary. Come on and give him praise in the sanctuary. Give him praise in the sanctuary. Magnify God in the sanctuary. Glorify God in the sanctuary. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to take this moment to welcome everyone to taking the word to the world. We're coming to you live from the auditorium of Word of Deliverance Ministries for the World, located at 693 Fresno Road in the Forest Park suburb of Greater Cincinnati. It is the Lord, it is in the Lord that we live, we move, and we have our being. The Lord is blessing us right now. You may not be able to see all that the Lord is doing for me, but I tell you what, he's blessing right now. Come on, I said he's blessing right now. He's blessing right now. And we thank God for the blessed people of God that have made their way inside of this auditorium. And we certainly thank God for all of you that are joining us as we stream this service live literally all over the world. Yes, we continue to operate under restricted means, but the devil is a liar and a deceiver too. We shall yet magnify God. We shall yet glorify God. Amen. We shall yet declare the name of Jesus. Amen. And so we thank God for you. We thank God for you. We're streaming on our Word of Deliverance website. We thank God for those of you that have joined us on our Word website. We thank God for those of you who have joined us on Facebook Live. Thank you, God, for those who have joined us on Facebook Live. Please like it, share it, and launch a watch party. Invite all of your friends to join you as you worship this morning. Amen. We thank God for all of those that have joined us on YouTube. If you're over on YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube network and share 
with your friends. Thank God for all those who joined us on Roku. Thank God for those who joined us over there and also those that are listening. We have those that are just listening in this morning. And yes, you can listen in at 712-770-5333. 712-770-5333. The access code is 453-882, 453-882. Our prayer lines are open. Prayer is in order at all times, and our prayer lines are open. If you are in need of prayer, you can call in for prayer at any time during this broadcast at 513-851-WORD. That's 513-9673. We've come to lift up the name of Jesus. I said, we've come to lift up the mighty name of Jesus. We've come to glorify the Lord. We've come to magnify God. God's been good to us. I believe God's been good to you. Now, whether you're in your home, your, your living room, your kitchen, your bedroom, wherever you may be, get ready for some worship. Maybe on your job, but get ready for some worship. Come on, pull yourself together. Let's get ready for some worship. Let's get ready for some praise because God has been just that good. Come on. Let's lift them up in praise and worship. Lord, we love you this morning. Come on, could you just open your mouth and tell the Lord how much you love him? Yeah. <laughs> 
I said, this thing is personal. This is personal. This is personal. Oh, you whatever I need, you whatever I need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to worship the king right now. Two more minutes. You whatever I need. You the I am. You whatever I need. You the I am. You are. You whatever I need. Come on. Give me praise in the place. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You're the I am, you are. You're the I am, you are. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we love you. We honor you, we thank you, we glorify you. You are so amazing, so amazing, so amazing, so amazing, so amazing. And we praise your name. We praise your name. Only because of your goodness, your love, your mercy, your grace, we are allowed together in this place. Mm, because of you, we live, we move, we have our being. Because of you, we were able to wake up this morning, hallelujah, with our mind on you. Only because of you, 
we were able to dress ourselves and prepare to worship and praise your holy name in the fellowship of the saints. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for moving in the hearts of your people. We thank you, oh God. We thank you, oh God, because you are being glorified. And because you're moving in your people, the devil's being terrified. And we just thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, oh God. He's not backing us up, but God, we're backing him up. God, we're determined to praise you. And you're saying if we praise you, if we stand and we magnify you, resist the devil, and he will run from us. Thank you, oh God, for putting the devil on the run. Thank you for putting every enemy on the run. No weapon formed against us can prosper. Every tongue that rises in judgment is condemned by the power of the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank God, we just ask you to have your way. Bless us in your word. Teach us in your word. Hold us in your word. In the powerful name of Jesus Christ, you are our Savior, our Lord, our King. Amen. Amen and amen. Come on and bless God all over the place. Whether in your house, whether in this home, come on and bless God. Say something to him. Oh, tell him how good he's been. Let him know you appreciate him. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You may be seated, everyone. You may be seated. Just a moment. I want to journey in the Word of God, and I want to ask you to just give me your attention a few moments as we journey in this Word, as we continue to study the Word, and ask Lord to really convey His Word, illuminate His Word. We say often there's a difference in reading it and studying it, and we believe in the study of God's Word. For we know that we can't only read it, we have to have an understanding. Amen. And we today ask God to just enlighten and help us with the translation and the understanding of his holy word. And how many know he will do it? How many know he will do it? I need some warriors in here. He will do it. He'll do it because we came here today understanding the devil's still a liar. <laughs> we yet have the victory and he's yet under our feet. Amen. Amen. And we're grateful and thankful for that. We're going to continue just a few moments as we have been digging in the word of God. We have, thank you Jesus, we have been studying from a subject, the word of God, the name of Jesus, the word of God, the name of Jesus, the word of God, the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We know by now that the word of God is the very foundation upon which we stand. We're here today because of the word of God. Amen. I thank God for his word. Because we're three-part being, we have to remind our spirit, soul, and body. That is the foundation of the word that we stand. Old church folk used to sing a song, everything going down. <laughs> what y'all say? Oh, some, some of y'all were around. Okay, okay, okay. Some of y'all heard that. Everything going down what? But the word of God. Y'all, y'all, don't y'all start nothing in here, but that, that, that stimulates. Everything going down but the word of God. Amen. We use an analogy to help describe and portray the importance of the Word of God. And we declare it as oxygen is to the body, so is the Word of God to our spirit. Amen. As oxygen is to the body, so is the Word of God to our spirit. We studied that a little bit. We saw that oxygen was colorless, odorless, and tasteless. In describing that analogy even further, we looked at a document from the University of Michigan and found out that without oxygen, one minute without oxygen, and the brain begins to die. Three minutes without oxygen, serious damage will occur within the brain and other cells of the body. Ten minutes without oxygen, and recovery is simply unlikely. Fifteen minutes, recovery is virtually 
impossible. One of the things that I've heard this COVID-19 attacks is the rate of oxygen in the blood. Really watch regarding the oxygen levels because if that oxygen level gets too low, the cells of the body will begin to die. It could be a slow death, but they have to watch the oxygen level in the body. Well, so is the Word of God. What is the level of the Word in our life? What is the level of the Word of God in our lives? Without the Word of God, there will be a disconnection from God. Our spirit cannot survive disconnected from God's Word. Our spirit man cannot survive disconnected from God's Word. Amen? Now, I want you to just follow this this morning. I want you to follow this because we're three-part being, and I want to show you just a little bit more regarding the importance of the Word and what this Word does for us. We know, and we've repeated it many times from 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Thank God for somebody knowing that Word. We walk by faith and not by sight. And we gave some illumination to that verse by saying we live by the Word of God. When it said we walk by, we can literally change that walk by to live by. We live by the Word of God, not the dictates of what comes through our sensory perceptors. We walk by faith, not by sight. We, work, we walk by spirit, we walk by the Word of God, not by our sight, our sensory perceptors. There is a difference. When we operate by the Word of God, there's a difference than operating by the sensory perceptors. Some folk are jacked up this morning because of what they saw, what they heard, what they touched. Come on here, somebody. That's operating by sight. But when you operate by faith, you put a close down on that and say, I'm going to hold on to the promise of the Word of God. By what I see, it looks jacked up. What I heard, oh my God, is horrible. But there's a Word of God that lifts me up. Y'all better help me out. And you know what I love about it? There's nothing the devil can do. There's nothing that can come our way that the Word of God cannot handle. I got to help somebody. I said there's nothing that can happen that the Word of God cannot handle. The Word of God got us here. The Word of God has taken us there. Let me say it again. The Word of God got us here. The Word of God has taken us there. And you got to understand, you cannot get relaxed in this thing. You cannot get relaxed in this thing. What do I mean by that? What got you here won't take you there. Uh-oh, you didn't get that. What got you here won't take you there. Thank God for the Word of God we've been eating and munching on and meditating on. It got us here, but it's going to take more work to get us there. Don't get to the place where you feel like you graduated and don't need it anymore. We all need some more word. I wish I had a praise on that one. When the strength of yesterday is all gone, <laughs> we need some more word to carry on. Did you hear me? Amen. Amen. The affliction of this life, a, a, a week, a, a, a way out. But thank God for more word. Amen. So then, Romans 10 and 17, we know that. We walk, faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God. That's 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 that says, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Romans 10, 17, so then faith coming by, the hear, coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We've often discussed, and I just believe that faith is the most important subject in the scripture. Amen? Because we have to live a life of faith. Another reason I say that I believe faith is the most important subject in the scripture because of what is in Hebrews 11 and 6, which declares, without faith, it is impossible to please him. Amen? So we must have faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. But he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen? I'm moving on, and I'm moving kind of swiftly because I'm trying to get to where I need to go. So I'm reviewing this a little bit, and I'm trying to get to a place. Y'all going to help me get to a place. Amen. We studied that John 6 and 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. 
We say there's a difference in reading it and studying it. And as we study it, how do we interpret what is being said there? It is the Spirit of God that gives life to our spirit. The Spirit of God gives life to our spirit. It is the Spirit that quickens, the Scripture says. Quickeneth means, or is translated, gives life. Amen? Quickeneth give life. The flesh profit of nothing. Again, it is the Spirit of God that gives life to our spirit. Amen? And then he said, the word, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The word of God is spirit and will bring life to our spirit. Get that. The word of God is spirit and brings life to our spirit. Amen? I want to speak just a little bit more about our three-part nature. Amen? We all know we have a three-part nature. Amen? We discovered this all the way back in Genesis. Let me go there just a moment. Genesis 1, 26 through 28. We really got to understand why we're saying as oxygen is to the body, so is the word of God to our spirit. Well, in Genesis 1, 26 through 28, very familiar. We all know these verses. It said, and God said, let us make man in our what? Image after our Likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over everything that creepeth upon the earth. The 27th verse says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. The 28th verse, and God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Now we read it. Now after reading it, what does our study let us know what's happening here? Well, we just read where the spirit of man was created by the word of God. Did you get that? It is right here in these verses, the spirit of man is created by the word of God. Nothing else but the word of God creates the spirit of man here in Genesis 1, 26 through 28. This is the first place man shows up and God created man spirit. Are you here? And in these verses... The spirit of man is given by God dominion over the earth. That's our study. The spirit of man is given dominion over the earth. So God gives that dominion to the spirit of man. However, man is not fully ready to take occupancy over the earth. After Genesis 1, man is not fully ready to take occupancy over the earth. Are you studying with me? Why is man not fully ready? The spirit of man is made by God, but man's spirit is not fully ready to take occupancy over what he was given dominion over. Are you with me? So why are you saying that? Okay, we'll tell you. Let's roll on to Genesis 2 and 7, where God completes man and makes him ready to take occupancy over the earth. Genesis 2 and 7, it says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. What happened here in Genesis 2? The spirit of man is clothed in earth. The spirit of man gets clothed in earth. God took the dust of the earth, amen, and formed man, amen. In other words, he took dust of the earth and gave man an earth suit. What we see when we look at each other are simply our earth suits created by God. 
And with our earth suits, we touch the earth. Amen? We feel the earth. From our earth suits, we take dominion over the earth. Amen? So the spirit of man was created by the word of God. And since the spirit of man was created by the word of God, only the word of God can strengthen and enhance and give life to our spirit. Are y'all still here with me? Are you still here with me? Amen? So what does it take? What does it take to bring deliverance? What does it take to bring healing? Why have we called this the Word of God, the name of Jesus? Well, we, we keep eating some of that Word. We keep eating that Word. And we ate the Word out of Psalms 107 and 20 that said, He sent His Word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. He sent His what? Word and what? Healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Amen? His word in our spirit will heal the destructions of our body. God help us in here. Let me say it again. His word flowing in our spirit will heal the destructions that come against our body. What I mean destructions that come against anything, any weapon, any sickness, any disease, it cannot stand against the power of the word of God. But we got to have it on the inside. We got to munch it, get it in our spirit, and there's got to be something on the inside that's moving on the outside that will bring about a change in our life. I wish I had some praises on the, come on here. Hallelujah. The word of God on the inside. Because the enemy will fight you. The enemy will come against any of us. He don't care who we are. He doesn't care that we say we love God. He doesn't care that we say we love the Word of God. Hallelujah. He's coming to tear us down. And he comes to attack the outside of us. Amen. Thinking if he can just get to the outside of us, it'll disconnect us from the spirit part of us. But we got to make sure there's a word on the inside that's strong enough to keep us from, caught, from falling. Lord, let there be a word that brings joy and keeps us from following under the pressures and assaults of the adversary. Did you hear what I said? And he will pressure and assault every one of us, no matter what your name is, no matter what your title is in the church. Amen. He has no respect for you, especially if you say you love God. Especially if you say you're going to trust him. You just made him mad. <laughs> but you got to have a word on the inside that gives you a determination. Amen? And when the word is strong on the inside, then you're able to grab this word. God help us in here. <laughs> you're able to grab this word like what we see in the 24th Psalm. And I want you to listen to this real good. The 21st song, the 24th song, excuse me, 24th song, the first verse says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. I'm going to read that again. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. How many believe that? The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they and they well I can understand some of them but not all of them because they act too they, they, those, those, those folk they, they act they. but the word said the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Anybody believe that? Hmm. And then we get down to the seventh verse. I'm trying to connect this all up. Lift up your heads. You hear this all the time. I want you to hear it in a special way today. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. 
Now remember, we're talking about three-part thing today. And the scripture says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Now you can read that or you can study it. If we really study it, there should come a time that we pause and say, why are we referenced or why are we referred to as heads, gates, and doors? Oh, I know you've read it. But what does it mean? It's one thing to read, it's another thing to study it. Why would the verse be referring to us as heads, gates, and doors? Hallelujah. God's amazing. And we praise God for this, and we thank God. Lift up your head, all your gates. Be ye lifted up the everlasting doors. What is the head? What is the gate? What is the door? Well, the first thing that has to happen, I want you to get this and munch it and get it real good. The first thing that has to happen, we get it out of 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. That's the first thing that has to happen. It has to be attention called to our head. If our head is not right, if our thinking's not right, we got a lock on the gate and a latch on the door. God, I give you praise. Hallelujah. God, I give you praise. God, I give you praise. I want to make the devil good and mad in here this morning. Lift up your head. Now, you know how it is when the pressures of life seem to come against us. Our heads drop. Drop with worry. Our heads drop because we're bothered. Our heads drop because we're mad. Oh, yes, yeah, church folk get mad, too. So there we are with our mad self and our heads have dropped down. And then the word of God said, uh-uh, first thing you're going to do is lift your head back up. Because the word of God cannot penetrate until your head gets lifted. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, are from the flesh, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of the stronghold that's trying to lock up in your mind. Come on here, somebody. Trying to lock up what you need to think and how you need to feel. No, I need to say, God, you take over. Because the last time I took over, I messed up. And since I don't want to mess up, I'm going to pull down the carnal stronghold in my own mind. Y'all ain't helping this. Because, see, this word goes no farther than ourselves. It's not a word we can throw to somebody else. This is where we got to eat. I said, God, help me pull down every stronghold that gets locked up in my mind and blocks what you have for my life. God, help me pull down, pull down, pull down, pull down every God Almighty. <laughs> Woo! My God, I'm about to shout by myself. Hallelujah. God, help me pull down every bondage. Some folk slept all last night with something locked up in their mind. Some folk went all last week with something locked up in their mind. Like what you're going through is too big for God to bring you out of. Is there anything too hard for God? God, I thank you for your word. Hallelujah. God, I thank you for your word. God, I thank you for your word. God, I thank you for your word. Some folk have had brain damage for the last 90 days. Let me explain that. When I see brain, when I say brain damage, something happened in your life. 
Something happened in your house. Something happened on your job 90 days ago. And your brain has been damaged for 90 days. And all you got to do is pull down the stronghold of the enemy and say, I'm not going to allow you to damage my brain another day. I'm going to lift up my head, pulling down the carnal thinking, pulling down the carnal thought. I got to lift my head. I can't connect to promise until I lift up my head. God, Lord, I wish I had time to work with this. Somebody say, no more brain damage. Say it again, no more brain damage. No more, no more, no more, no more, no more, no more. Somebody's blessing is being blocked by brain damage. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Somebody is preventing the Spirit of God from taking over in your life because of brain damage. When I say brain damage, I mean you got your mind locked on something. And the Holy Ghost said, let it go. Let God Almighty, let it go. Lift up your head. Let it go. Mm, mm, mm. Get your mind on the power of the Word of God. Let it go. And you know what I like about God? He never said it didn't happen. Brains get damaged because we want to convince God and everybody else that it did happen. It was real bad. It was real ugly. And the Lord said, you don't have to convince me of how bad it was. I saw how bad it was before it got to you. But the Lord said, tell somebody, before it got to you, he had already provided a way of escape. God, I'm not, he had, oh, my God, somebody ought to be shouting by now. Before it reached you, he had already provided a way of escape. You don't know to take you in. God will bring you out. Somebody ought to be hollering in here. Hallelujah. Okay, so God, I'm not, oh, Lord. Woo. Lift up your head. Oh, your gate. So you got the head part, right? That's the flesh. Lift up your head. Oh, your gates. Well, what's the gates? If that's the head, what's the gates? Well, we're three parts. The gates are the soul. The gates are the soul. If our head's not right, our gate can lock down. Nothing can penetrate to the spirit part of us if our gates are locked. And if the flesh or head part of us is overtaking the word of God that should be leading us, there's a lockup in the soul. Remember, the soul sits in between body and spirit. Within the soul lies memory. Are you hearing me? Every sensory perceptor can get locked up in the soul. What you heard, what you felt, what you saw can get locked up in the soul. And there'll be like a real lock on the gate. And until you pull down the stronghold in your mind, the gate on the soul will remain locked. But the moment we pull down the stronghold, the enemy is, has tried to attach to our mind, the gate, the, the lock on the gate comes unfastened. God help me. I wish I had time to work with this. So now lift up your head, O ye gates. Lift up your head, O ye gates. Get the lock off. Somebody said, get the lock off. And be ye lifted up now, and be ye lifted up, you everlasting doors. The door is to your spirit. And the king of glory shall come in. The king of glory wants to come into nowhere but your spirit. That's why we start out with John 6, 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. 
It is a spirit that brings life to spirit. The flesh profiteth nothing. The spirit of God, the word of God that's not trying to get in our flesh. Our flesh, even today, is still not saved. Oh, so. The flesh part of us doesn't get saved. Only the spirit part of us gets saved. So lift up your head, oh ye gates, get your mind right. Oh ye gates, get the lock off. Be ye lift up ye everlasting doors. My doors are now open. And the king of glory shall come in. The king of glory only wants to get to the door. He got to get to the door of my spirit. The king of glory wants to get into the door of my spirit. How did I, I say the king of glory wants to get into the door of your spirit? But you first, first must first have to lift up your head. Lift up your head. Lift up your head. Somebody give God glory in this place. I got to quit. I got to stop. <laughs> oh, my God. Let me ask you a question. Is it worth holding on to? Is that anger on the inside of you worth holding on to? Is that thing that upset you worth holding on to? I'd rather pull that stronghold down, get the lock off of my gate, and open up the door of my spirit because God is not done blessing me. God is not done blessing you. Somebody holler in here. Woo! Glory, glory. Somebody shout glory in the house. Somebody shout glory in the house. My God, my God, my... <laughs> is it worth it? The only thing that's worth it, the only thing that's worth it is making sure I'm in the proper alignment to receive from my God. That's why I let somebody know, look, I have, I have passions and feelings just like, just like everybody else. I got my ways of thinking, but then I have to recognize that my ways of thinking about to go to the wrong side. I got to drop it off because the flesh part of me with my way of thinking wouldn't be thinking so good of thoughts towards somebody right now. Oh, Y'all don't get it. But because I know that that can be a stronghold that would block my blessing, I have to say, God bless them. God help them. God lift them. Oh my God, I'm about to run up in here. God have your way in their life. Hallelujah. God have your way. Because you'll take what the devil meant for bad and you'll turn it to the good. And because you're sovereign God, because you know more than I know, because you're higher than I am, because you're greater and wider than I am, I choose to praise you. I'll take down the stronghold, open up these gates, and open up these doors, and say, come on in, King of Glory. Come on in, King of Glory. Come on in, King of Glory. The whole earth is filled with the glory of God. Give him praise. Give him praise. Come on, stand to your feet in here. I got to quit. Woo! Give him praise. And then the scripture says, who is <laughs> the king of glory? Mm -hmm. The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. The Lord mighty in battle. I'd rather let the Lord do the fight. I'd rather let the Lord fight for me. Y'all ain't up for me. I said I'd rather let the Lord do the fight for me. If I fight, I might mess it up. But since he is the Lord mighty in battle, God, you do. Somebody say, Lord, you do. Even sitting in your house, you ought to say, Lord, you do it. On your job, saying, Lord, you do it. Hey, verse, who is the king of glory, the Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle, lift up your heads. Oh, ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. 
and the King of glory shall come in. Come on in, Lord. Come in. Come into this house. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Hallelujah. Somebody give God a hallelujah praise. Lord, when I pray, give me a way to say, oh, yeah. when I pray. That's all it takes to release the stronghold that locks up in our mind is a yes, Lord. Don't even let the devil think he got that much over us. All it takes is a yes, Lord. Y'all ain't helping me. I said all it takes is a yes, Lord. Yes, that's right. That's all it takes is a yes, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. There may be someone who's heard this word of God. Maybe you couldn't make it into the auditorium. Wonderful thing about how we have in church right now, you are just as close as the person around the corner to this facility. You may be 100 miles away or 500 miles away, but there's no distance to the Word of God. If you want us to agree in prayer with you regarding anything, because we read the Word to say, is there anything too hard for God? There's nothing too hard for God. So if you have a special need for prayer, I encourage you to call our prayer line right now, 513-851-WORD, 513-851-9673. Somebody answer that call and we'll pray along with you. Now maybe somebody here in this facility, in this auditorium, and you desire prayer, you're in need of prayer, we encourage you to come. As you come, we're still exercising social distancing and all those other precautions but as you come just get on one of those blue marks that's right just get on one of those get on one of those blue marks and you're in the right place that's right get on one of those blue marks and you'll be in the right place that's right look at them coming we ought to thank God for them coming my God oh how beautiful that's right just get on one of those blue marks get on one of those blue marks thank you so much that's right find yourself on one of those blue marks and you're in the right place. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 
Tell him, yeah, tell him, yeah. Come on and say, yeah. Come on and tell the Lord, yeah, tell the Lord, yeah. My God, my God. Come on and tell him, yeah. Come on and tell him, yeah. I was just informed. As people were coming through the line on yesterday and receiving food, and they were handing out food. This young lady came through the line and said she'd been to the doctor with her baby. And the doctors had told her that her baby shall not live. God, I give you praise. But she spoke to the folk distributing the food and she said if I come to church tomorrow would you all pray for me and would you pray for my baby she said because I believe that God can heal how many believers are in here boy Boy, we about to have a Holy Ghost takeover of it. My God, if I can get some prayer warriors, if I can get some folk that believe in the might and the power of the Word of God, come on here. Hey, my God, my God, my God, I get the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What's the baby's name? Nico. Hallelujah. I need every believer, whether you can decide to turn, whether you, you're sitting in your house, you might be in your bedroom, and you're wherever you are. I need every believer to lift their hands up. That's a that's a sign, Lord. We surrender to you. That's all that means, Lord. We surrender to you. Now, Father, we thank you. For it was by no accident, no coincidence, no mistake that you would have this ministry distributing food on yesterday. The first Saturday in, in many weeks that we've distributed food, but it happened yesterday. And God, on yesterday, you let this dear mother who has this dear child Name Nico. God, we don't know the totality of the situation. But the doctors have examined and they've said as much as they can do. They said there's nothing they can do. The baby shall not live. But God, we examined your word. We examined the power of your word. And Lord, there's something in this mother that made her say, if I come to the house of God, would you all pray for my baby? I believe God can heal my baby. And God, we declare, you 
are the healer. You are the healer. You are the healer. You are the healer. You are the giver of life. You are the giver of life. You said the word I speak unto you is spirit and is life. God, I speak life. I speak life. We join together and we speak life. We speak life. And now I command you, Nico, by the power of the word of God, by the power of the name of Jesus, I command you to live. I command you live. I command you live. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by stripes we are healed. God, we declare your word. You sent your word in here. Now, by the power of your word, from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, everything out of order, place it in order. We declare life. Somebody give God praise. family that came forth this morning, we declare your word. We declare your word. We declare your word. The word of God, the name of Jesus. The word of God, the name of Jesus. The word of God, the name of Jesus. It is done. It is done by the word of God in the name of Jesus. It is so by the word of God in the name of Jesus. By the word of God, in the name of Jesus. By the word of God, in the name of Jesus. Come on, give me praise.
What's the mother's name? Betty. Maddie. God bless you, Maddie. God bless you. Thank God for you coming through the drive yesterday, Maddie. She works with you. Wow. Thank God for you coming through the line. And thank God that you saw that's no accident, coincident or mistake. That you met up with Sister Kamisha at your, at your job. That you came through the line on yesterday because you're believing God for the healing of your body. We want all your information. Because we want to keep in touch. We want to keep track. We're going to keep playing, praying. And we're going to watch God do this thing. I've seen God do it before. But we're going to watch God. We're going to see this thing through. Come on, we're going to see this thing. Somebody give God praise in. Come on, y'all. God bless you, dear. God bless you.
somebody just shout, what a mighty God, what a mighty God, what a mighty God. Come on. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. He said his word and healed them. Good God, my God. <laughs> trying to get out of here. the line to receive a box of the food that was being distributed. But then she recognized where she was and said, if I come to church tomorrow, I know what the doctor said, but if I come to the house of God, Because I believe if I believe if y'all pray, I believe if y'all pray, God can heal my baby. I've seen God do it. How many believe he will? He will, he will, he will, he will, he will. I seen God do it. Here in a minute. I see God do it, and I know. And y'all just get ready to tell it. It's getting ready to happen. 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 showed up in this place today. How many know God showed up in this place today? We cannot operate like we just another business in the city. We got to operate like we prayer warriors, seeking God, praying in good times and bad times, praying in, come on, in good days and bad days, praying when we see the light and praying in darkness, praying like we got experience and we know what prayer will do. Some of us have prayed before, and we've seen God work things out before. We've seen God bring us out before. We've seen God heal us before. I've seen God do it. Don't try to shut me down now. I got to pray for somebody that don't know what to do. Jesus. We got to do. We got to do it like we got experience. We got to do like we heard a war cry. Ought to be some church folk here a war cry. It's time for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ to hear a war cry. It's time to pray now. It's time to declare that we need the power of God to move in the land. If nobody can heal, my God can heal. I've seen God do it. Let me tell you something. Don't you stop praying now. I don't care what the name of the virus is. There's one name you better know that's more powerful than any name of the virus. There's a name, there's a name, there's a name, there's a name that's above every name. I God, my God, the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow, every tongue pressure. I dare you to shout, Jesus. Thank <laughs> you. 